Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. We've got a lot of great stories to talk about today. Guitars that have taken forever to get here times two, and just one that's a little bit fun to unbox, and we'll hear from our sponsor, rockandspark.com, after the first one. Let's start with this one. This silly little guitar right here has taken over a year to get here. Because <laughs> I think it was a limited edition for 2019, but the problem is, is as soon as they would ever be listed, they would sell instantly. I mean, it's to the point where these things sell for more used than they did brand new, simply because you can't find them because they're such a niche little thing. And it was part of a limited edition series from Fender. And to make matters even worse, I really, really, really wanted this guitar. So I ended up contacting a dealer who said that they would hold me one, kind of like a pre-order thing. But I was like, do you want some payment for that? That way we can make it official. They're like, no, 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 we don't need that. So it's like, okay. So then I contact them a couple of weeks later. Yeah, they have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. So unfortunately I was turning away other guitars that were showing up on Reverb because I finally got the deal I was wanting. Cause that's the other thing. I have to find a dealer that's willing to give me a slight deal because you know, to buy a review and then sell, I have to make a little bit of money to make it worth my time, right? So that really made me upset because I did not see any of these listed for a while. But then I finally found another batch listed by this Replay Exchange. And they had a blue one and they had a blonde one. And I was really undecided on what color I wanted. So I reached out to them to see if they would be able to match that same great deal I had gotten before to the shop that ended up forgetting about me. And they said yes, so I was super pumped for that. But by the time I was able to get back to the shop, unfortunately, the one that I wanted the most had sold. So I was like, darn it, is that other one still available? I'll take it, I'll take it, save it for me. And they said, yes, this one's yours. It's all yours, man. So I'm like, finally, I've done it. I've gotten this guitar. And then I get the worst news of my entire life. The stupid neck pickup's not working on it. So they're like, we're gonna have to wait for Fender to send us a replacement part. So I ordered this at the end of last year, I think what, around December or something? And I was told it, it might be about a month wait for the part, but then a one month goes by, two months goes by, COVID happens, and yeah, here we are. <laughs> Almost at the end of 2020 now. This guitar has finally made it. They finally got that replacement pickup. So I sure hope this thing is worth the wait. And you're probably curious, why does it take so long just to get a replacement pickup? It's because you can't buy these pickups. This is... <laughs> I love it. It's the tenor Telecaster. This is the stupidest little thing I've ever seen, but it's love at first sight for me. I think I'm happy I went with the butterscotch blonde in the end. So they probably had to make me another custom pickup down in Mexico because the original one was broken. And just to back up that story, I asked them to include it because I mean, where else are you gonna find a tenor Telecaster pickup? I'm sure somebody could rewind this and then like make it a Nashville style Tele tenor. So I just wanna do a huge shout out to this shop replay guitar exchange because not only did they allow me to be refunded after a couple of months of waiting but they said once that pickup came back in i could repurchase it they were great the whole time they could have easily sold this guitar for more than what they sold it to me but instead they decided to honor that price and they were real good about all of it but was this thing worth the wait I think so. I love it. This neck profile is so strange. It's like the deepest U shape, but the tiniest U shape at the same time. I can't wait to do the review and demo of this thing. I don't think I will want to sell it. It's just that goofy. Well, now that that fun little guy's done, let's go ahead and check out a word from our sponsor today, rockandspark.com. If you go to their website, you can use the code TROGLY for 20% off. So this is a new company that was just started by the same guys who run the gothic.com that we've been talking about. And this one is like more rock and roll influenced jewelry. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at these bad boys. Oops, some of them are opening already. What is happening? <laughs> you didn't see that, you didn't see that. All right, so what is the first one that I will be surprised by? I like this. It feels like a snake, like what a real snake feels like, but yet it's just a basic chain. It doesn't feel like it would really catch your hair or anything either. 
Box number two. This kind of reminds me of like a Slash inspired ring. Cause you got the top hat with the cigarette. It says 1936 for some reason. Maybe someone else will know the significance to that. That's pretty heavy weighted. Definitely do some damage with this. Our next one here, it appears to open all fancy like this. We got another chain. This one's kind of like a twisted rope. I like the optical illusion of twirling it. It just keeps going and going and going. Inside this one, a white skull man. Can't say it's my favorite, but it definitely would fit into somebody's theme. I like the quality of this one. It's nice and thick. This is a good one. The Ace of Spades. So far, this has to be my favorite ring because, you know, it just makes you think of the song, right? It looks like two more here. This one, another sort of chain. Oh yeah, I asked them for this one because, I mean, it's Maui's hook. I, I think that's what they're going for here. So my kids will like this one because they're a big fan of that Moana movie. And lastly here, looks like another chain. This one's kind of snake-like too, but a little bit more traditional. So once again, please check out their new website, rockandspark.com, and you can use the code TROGLY at checkout for 20% off your purchase. Thank you, Rock and Spark, for sponsoring this unboxing episode, and let's get back to some unboxings. Okay, what fun stories do we have to talk about now? Do we go for another delayed one, or let's go with this one, because there's not as much of a story to it. I have documented every single color of this particular model, and they're just kind of a quirky Les Paul. But the very first one that I got was back when I was just doing like my carpet demos. Like essentially the whole purpose of those videos were just for the person who was buying it so they could see the condition in real time. I could talk them through all the little nicks and dings on the guitar. I mean, that's how my channel started. I wanted to do that to A, cut down on returns because I don't like returns and make it easier for buyers to know the condition. I wanted a way to document every single guitar that I've ever owned because that's something that's always kind of bugged me about talking to guitar people is they'll go, oh yeah, I've had thousands of guitars. But in reality, they might have had like 150. It just feels like a thousand. So I wanted a way to prove that, yes, I have owned a thousand plus guitars. I think I'm just now getting close to that. Because I remember there was a point where I thought I was there, but I was only at like five or six hundred. <laughs> it's crazy to think about, but hey, at least I can remember the guitars some way. So this one was the very first of the Goddess series. And I felt like this is the only color that doesn't have at least a semi what decent video. So I could redo it again because it's been about nine months since we talked about one of these and finding these in clean shape has become pretty difficult, but we can relearn about the Goddess series. I know we've covered it a bunch of times, but we got to get the updated B-roll shots. And at first I really did not like the Skyburst finish because it reminded me too much of the Robot series or like the HD6X. But over time, I've come to really appreciate this Blue Burst one because it's not quite the same as the Robots. As far as condition on this one, it's just like a, a weird streak line right here, like something affected the finish a little bit. It's not too bad, but these things are beautiful little tiny Les Pauls. I really like this blue one. This was a great find on Reverb. I would love to have a complete collection of all the colors, you know, just hanging up on my wall because they are just beautiful guitars. And now the last one comes from my new Guitar Day program for my forwarding division. So somebody contacted me and they said, hey, I'm having some issues getting this guitar out of uh, wherever this came from, like Sweden or something. And I think the issue they were having was their payment. Like they needed a little bit of time to make the full payment because their bank was declining their cards, something like that. It's been a while. And so that ended up all working out okay. I've got the full payment and everything. And the seller shipped the guitar via a, a service called like B-Post or something. And somebody had sent something to me that way before, like a couple of months prior to this. And it took a whole month to get here. Getting stuff internationally right now has kind of been a real big pain. But this particular guitar, it was never delivered. It sat somewhere for two months and then they eventually delivered it right back to the owner of this guitar without any real explanation as to why. So it's like, what? You gotta be kidding me here. So I was talking him through with what was going on with this whole shipping process, but after it was delivered back, I mean, the seller was just as upset as I was. So I was like, okay, I'm going to send this out UPS this time. 
these guys get it here within four days. <laughs> you know, I used to hate UPS, but I've come to be one of their biggest fans because they're the most economical and half the time they're the quickest, especially with international packages and even domestic nowadays. So what is the guitar in here that was so special to wait all this time and bring it back to the USA? Whoa. This is the Gibson Orange Widow. This looks way better in person than it does in photos. Word of advice, not a good idea to use this type of material on guitars on the inside, because it kind of scratches them. But we've talked about the Widow series many of times on this channel. Essentially, they're Les Paul Customs with colored over binding, like they don't scrape the binding finish off, they just leave it like that. It really does give it an interesting vibe. I mean, this has a really nice active top. Like, I was not impressed in photos, but in person here, that is a very active top with a lot of that wood grain line showing. So we'll go over all that again because I actually have a very special Widow that we still need to do a review on. So we'll just kind of tie these two together and have a colorful episode. Scarily enough, I somebody told me Halloween's two months away and I was like, what? No, it's not. <laughs> it's like, oh, I, I guess it is. All right, troglodytes, let's go ahead and uh, switch over to some boxings and say goodbye to some guitars. We got a busy day of packing stuff today. Three of them going out. First one, starting off with a new guitar day purchase, the Gretsch White Penguin. This was such a cool guitar. I'm so glad I got to check one out. I really ended up liking it in the end. I mean, it's like a oblong Les Paul. I'd prefer to have a regular trapeze style tailpiece because I think it looks a little bit fancier. The original G logo ones, they are pretty cool. They're like Cadillacs. The headstock and the blingage takes a little bit to get used to, but once you know what you're looking at, this is really a nice playing guitar. I would not mind checking out some more Gretches in the future, but it's nothing that I'm going to uh, particularly seek out. But maybe some vintage ones, I'll get into that because I did enjoy this. And what is our next one to pack up here? It's that Schecter guitar that they had sent me. The PT Fastback, as they like to have called it. I wasn't a big fan of the pickups in this one, but it sounded okay in the demo, just not as good in the room for me personally anyways. These are styled after those same TV Jones pickups that we had just saw in that Gretsch, but they don't sound anything like it, unfortunately. I think they need to go back to the drawing boards on these if they're really going for that TV Jones sound, because real deal TV Jones stuff sounds fantastic. Maybe they should just increase the price of these and put the USA TV Jones pickups in here because that's just how good those are. I mean, the guitar, it played okay. It felt fine. But if there's a different Schecter model you guys want me to check out, I never really did hear back from them after my review, so I don't know if they were happy with me or not. But you can check out the full review and demo for more. I mean, it's an absolutely beautiful guitar, but my favorite feature will always be this back. I mean, that is just great. And our last one to pack up today is a bass. I haven't packed a bass in a really long time. This is that Tony Franklin signature. So initially I had decided to scrap this review because doing bass videos just frustrates me. I spend all this time and effort. I get way less views than had I put the exact same effort into some sort of a guitar. That's just my following. We like guitars, not so much basses. But that day I was running a little bit low on time and I thought, well, there's relatively low expectations for me playing a fretless bass. So surely this video can't be that hard to make. And no, it wasn't. I actually ended up really enjoying this because, you know, it was something brand new. I had a lot of fun with with it and it turns out that Mr. Franklin he's actually a really approachable guy on his YouTube channel and he seemed to enjoy my video that I made of it it's just such a beautiful guitar too so after what was it 14 years they finally introduced this really cool color and I think it's a knockout another cool thing that fretless basses can do really well is if you get the harmonic you can actually slide with it I'm sure that sounds a lot cooler when it's plugged in though. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and say goodbye to this thing. 
Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in to this Boxing Unboxing episode. Please don't forget to visit our sponsor, rockandspark.com. Use coupon code TROGLY for 20% off, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.